Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to a brand new series, or brand new Let's Play for Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. DCSS is by far my favorite roguelike game. I just love it. I think it's got the right level of lots of variation and difficulty, but also removing a lot of sort of tedium. Um, anything in the game, or in, in sort of general roguelikes, where, you know, such and such a play becomes kind of a no-brainer, like you're just going to always want to, you know, do blank. Well, then they, they sort of, you know, either make it automatic or remove that sort of mechanic and work around it. Like, they try to eliminate as many non-interesting decisions, as well as, like, really annoying RNG. Uh, to make what I think is just a really solid, true roguelike game. Turn-based, sort of uh, dungeon exploration, procedural dungeons, uh, and, and a fair amount of, of difficulty, and a lot and lot of lot of different variations. Today we're gonna be playing an ogre wizard. That's right. See, this ogre of ours, he, uh, he always wanted to become a wizard, and all his uh, friends and family laughed at him because everyone knows that only two-headed ogres make the best magi. Uh, and he was like, no, I'm going to do it anyway, and I'm going to prove it to you by retrieving the Orb of Zot from the Great Dungeon over here, or something like that. Uh, as it turns out, in Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, actually, ogres make pretty good spellcasters. So if we look up at our skills over here, and we're going to talk about it, if you're not familiar with Dungeon Crawl and how these mechanics work, uh, I will explain it now. Um, there's no concept as of class in Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. When you pick your character, you pick a race and a background. The background, which in this case is wizard is what I put, picked here, just gives you a few starting skills and some starting equipment. But the most powerful thing about your character is actually your race, because your race determines your aptitude for various skills, and aptitude affects how much experience you need to raise your skill. So as an ogre, we have plus three fighting aptitude, so we will level up fighting a lot easier. It costs less for us to level it up. In fact, the cost here, you can see, this is the XP cost. To go from level zero to level one fighting, it costs 0.6 XP, whereas if you compare it to short blades, it would cost 1.2 XP. A four aptitude difference, which is what you're seeing here, from minus one to plus three, it equals like double the cost, or half the cost, if you want to think about it that way. So um, because there's four points of difference between fighting and short blades, fighting is effectively will level up twice as quickly as short blades. That being said, uh, or you'll need twice as much XP or half the XP or whatever, but because the the XP cost goes up as you keep going up in levels, in practice, you know, the difference between, uh, you know, when you hit max level fighting, what you would have had in short blades is not quite as meaningful as it might look. But plus three is insane. Minus one is not particularly problematic. You can you can live with your minus ones uh, and not worry about it too much. And in fact, if we look over at our spell casting, um, what's interesting here, as an ogre, we do have plus one spell casting aptitude, which is actually fairly uncommon to get positive spell casting uh, aptitude. Spell casting, raising it up gives you a little bit more mana. It gives you more slots to memorize spells. It also generically improves your power uh, with all spells that you cast, as well as lowering the spell failure chance with all spells that you cast. More meaningfully, however, are the spell schools over here. These have a massive impact on the power uh, and success rate of your spells, but only in that particular skill or school. As an ogre, we do have a minus one aptitude in all specific schools over here. Um, so we don't have anything we particularly excel in. A minus one is annoying, but not a problem. Um, and the plus one in spellcasting will help to balance that out. It's also worth noting we do have a plus one in invocations. If you want to play more of a melee or slightly more hybrid-y kind of a uh, ogre, uh, and you pick a god with uh, that gives you a bonus with um, or that uses invocations for its powers, uh, the ogre is quite nice there. Evocations is used for things like wands. We have pretty poor aptitude there, but that's okay. We're not really going to need wands um, because we're going to be relying on spells for the sort of distance and hexing and I don't know whatever we got going on. Got a minus two aptitude for stealth, uh, so we're not really interested in that. We are quite poor aptitude for armor. Now, as it turns out with an ogre, armor is an interesting thing because we are we are a very large creature. If um, we go here, you are too large for most types of armor. We can only wear robes, hides, and dragon scale armor. Um, so we don't actually gain access to most armor. Uh, I think as well, it's possible we have the armor fits poorly on us. Maybe not so much. Maybe not so much. So our ability to find armor we're going to be able to wear is going to be a little limited. However, make up for it. We do have slightly toughened skin. And if we bring up this screen here, we do it does point out that we're large. Um, so yeah, unfitting armor is specifically the thing, the, the ogre thing of like we can't wear, you know, most things. Uh, large means um, I think we get an innate sort of penalty to our e evasion. In addition to that, um, we can wield very large weapons like ogre clubs, for example, uh, or giant clubs, maybe the words are called. 
Um, and actually, with shields, we need fewer skill points to um, eliminate all like mischance and things like that from shields. So we're really going to be looking for a shield here. Since we can't wear as many armors, um, and our, therefore our defenses are going to be kind of meh, uh, we're really going to be eager to find shields. And if we can find some defensive spells that could help out quite a bit too. Um, our starting spellbook as a wizard, we do actually start with magic dart. Magic dart or magic missile? Magic Dart over here. Um, Magic Dart has a range just like basically as far as you can see. It has, you know, if you can see it, you can shoot it with the Magic Dart. You do need line of sight. Um, it starts off with, does, with no hunger requirement, so it doesn't actually require or doesn't make us hungry to cast a spell, which is nice. Uh, and the power. Magic Dart will never do a ton of damage. Um, and as a wizard, wizard's kind of a tough background. Uh, in a sense, because it doesn't really start you off with a lot of uh, high damage spells. It, like you're gonna have to find a spell book to be able to actually zap people with uh, with sufficient amount of strength. Um, a wizard background actually helps to you know you may want to be a a bit of a hybrid you know and still do weaponry and stuff like that. Uh, I quite like call imp and all summoning things and maybe we'll do like pole arm and stab you know across the imp or something like that. Uh, because pull arms have range, so we'll see. But in any case, right now, what we have to do um, is we do have to set our uh, skills that we're going to work on. Um, what I want to do, we have a slight chance, we have a 10% chance to fail magic dart, which is pretty poop-tastic. Um, so we'd like to eliminate some of that because we're going to be spamming that a lot. In addition to that, it'd be nice to get a little bit more power. But like the dart damage, like 1d3, or well, it, 1d three plus some power level variation over there. So it's never gonna do a lot of damage. Um, but I think the thing to do is we will start by working on our conjurations. Um, we're gonna want to get, I don't know, at least probably up to level four conjuration. I did not hit that correctly, did I? Um, equal to set as training target, G for conjuration, level four. At least that, we don't need quite that much for just magic dart to eliminate its failure risk, but we're gonna need some for like um, our walls of flame and a few other things. Um, and just because we're at level 3.6 with spell casting, I'm gonna wanna also level that up to an even amount. I think I'm gonna set a training target of some, I keep doing it wrong. This, F, there we go, uh, something like six. I think we'll appreciate having a little bit more mana pool, generically better spell casting, and we'll see. And then uh, once we raise this up a little bit, we'll turn on fighting and probably leave it on for the entire game. So fighting does increase your accuracy and your damage with weapons, but more importantly, it gives you more hit points. And one of the big things as an ogre, despite our crap defenses, is we do get 30% more hit points per level. So our primary defense will just be tons and tons of tons of hit points. Got a hobble hobble in over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a macro. So you hit the tilde key, then M, I'm gonna bind it to one, and my macro is gonna be Z to zap a spell, A for magic dart, and then I think the trick, uh, you put F, and I think it minimizes the chance that you accidentally wait a turn, instead of period, to like finish the cast. I think that turns out to be better. I don't know what it does if you've got something quivered though. Right, then it'll just ask you to target something, and you'd still have to hit enter, so you got a chance to back out. So we're gonna dart you a bunch, heal you, get a bit of XP, rest, I will pick up the club so I have an weapon, because I literally am unarmed. As a wizard, we just started with a hat, a robe, and a ration, and our spell book, of course. Okay, we got our first potion, Thr frilled lizard. We're just gonna go and zap you. There we go. Tr giant cockroaches can be tough, but they don't gen generally do a lot of damage. Dart slug can be very annoying, because he will have a ranged attack, and they, they're surprisingly tough to hit. Now, they don't, they don't have hands, so they can't open a door. So what we're gonna do is shift X, enter over here. So we'll just walk over there. We'll leave the dark slug behind for a bit. You can see when I talk about the cockroach, there we go, can take a lot of punishment. Now we're not particularly speedy as an ogre. I don't think we're slower than normal. Um, some things we're gonna be able to run away from, some things we can't. We cannot wear scale armor, scale mail, which is very unfortunate. Um, did you die? No, you're just out of line of sight. Level two! Uh, we can probably just go and bash the goblin since it's unarmed, so it only does its base damage. Um, let me just chop up these bodies here. We are going to now be able to memorize some more stuff. We're gonna memorize Call Imp, yes. Um, and I will also memorize Blink as sort of an escape. Um, we don't have the spell slots, oh no we do actually, to memorize Slow. Um, the thing is, we're, I think we're gonna use Mephetic Cloud, maybe more reliable. I don't know, it might be good to slow and then run away from things. Let me go ahead and memorize it. 
Okay, now that we've got some of these things memorized, I can actually adjust what our skills that we're doing are. I'm going to leave those on. I'm going to turn on summonings um, because the more power we have, the more powerful the imps we're going to summon are. And in any case, I would like to get rid of the uh, failure rate on imps, um, or at least lower it considerably. You can have up to three imps summoned at a time, and yeah, the more power you have, of course we're going to find like plate armor right away. Do we, no, we're not going to do throwing weapons. I don't tink anyway. Spellcasting is now level four. Now there's the dart slug. Yeah, out of magic. It is, it is quite slow. It's, it was easy to run away from it. Um, let's just go and sit over here. I'll go here, close the door. It can't open the doors, it doesn't have hands. Okay, now we have full mana. Um, oh yeah, I can't do Contra Flame because it's level three. Because that's a really good ability. Okay, these guys are pretty weak. Summoning is now level one. Zap, zap, zap. Kill you. Uh, we're out of mana. You do have a club, so you'll do slightly more damage. Just going to... This is a little risky because I was entering an area I hadn't really uncovered. I'm just going to keep backing away here, although we might run into the, sl the dart slug, which would be less than ideal. Now, these guys do have hands, so they can't open doors. Um... Let's go ahead and try to summon an imp. Hey, there we go. I'm going to sit here and melee along with my imp. I probably could have just meleeed him, but I'm trying to be careful. I'm actually not very good at casters. Um, I mean, I'm not good at many things in Dungeon Crawl, but casters in particular, I've not done terribly well with. I think we did do a video where I send it as a gargoyle earth elementalist, which is pretty strong. So that helped a lot. So yeah, I don't know what, what, what we're going to do in terms of gods. If I wasn't, if I didn't want to focus so much on magic, and I do want to focus quite a bit on magic, I mean, we'll, we will pick up, you know, do the weapon thing, because, I mean, pure caster is sort of an unnecessary level of difficulty. Some hybridization is good. Um, and in particular, okay, uh, we've got a level up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to boost my intelligence, but we will get a plus one to strength because every uh, three levels we do that as well. Um, we will want some strength will be appreciated if we get dragon scale armor because we'll be able to wear it and not get as much sort of spell, spell failure chance from that. Um, I don't know exactly how we're going to work it. We, we will probably have to research some amount of armor skill to eliminate some of the penalty. Maybe we have to go around the robe for like shockingly long. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I, I can see us maybe doing spears, like doing a lot of summons and then just, or pole arms, I should say, to be able to um, just attack through our summons or you know, past our summons, I guess would be a little bit more of an accurate way of saying it. I should be resting maybe on the stairs instead of there. Let's just whack you there. Where'd you go, punk? There we go. are bad because they poison you. Luckily, we do have enough hit points that we can probably wait out most applications of poison. And yeah, like the plus 30% hit points is pretty substantial. Um, but considering a lot of races actually have minus 10% hit points, it's like even more substantial than it might appear at first. Okay, these guys are annoyingly tough and do decent damage. Now, the jackals normally are not alone. Let me back up some. And they're fast, so like escaping them is not really in the cards. And I think um, if we move here, yeah. So you look at the time. It, this shows you the amount of time the last action took. So if I move here, it's, it's one. So one is the amount of time, the base time it takes for like normal races to move. So we're not slow, but you know we're not fast either. Um, yeah, I'd rather not. Let me pull back a bunch here. Summon some imps to help with this. And yeah, see, I'd love to reach past him right now. I don't think we've seen any spear or pole arm. Ah, there you did. I think we get reduced XP if one of our summons kill it, but I'm okay with that. Um, spear? Pole arm? Maybe? Yeah. I don't think so. I think I would have noticed it. Well, no, I actually doubt very much that I would have noticed it, but because I don't tend to notice things, but I feel fairly confident that we didn't see one, that there wasn't a lot of opportunity for me to have missed one yet. Maybe that's the better way to say it. 
Okay, summoning increased. We do feel sick. We're gonna wait out the poison. Let's take a look over here. Hexes or call imp. Yeah, 8% chance to fail. That's much more reliable, which is good. But again, getting a little bit of um getting some power in there will give us more imps. I think there's always a chance of getting the weakest imp. But as you level up, there's more and more of a chance that you'll get more powerful ones. By the way, the music in the background is from Crusader Kings 2. There's no there's no sound in this game. Um, and, you know, I feel like it fits pretty well. Uh, I'd love to pick up those bodies before they rot, but I'm just going to dodge around here, replenish my mana. Dead, dead, dead. Okay, we did get to chop those. Some upstairs, some downstairs, more upstairs. And normally I actually peek at downstairs, and I should really be doing that. I don't think we're going to be going slings, because we're going spells. You know, we have sort of range stuff. Oh, rushing water. Okay, well, then I guess we're staying on this floor. Um, and we're also going to read scrolls right now. Hope we get a scroll of magic mapping. Identify is kind of handy. I will identify potions with that. Lignification. Let's read this. Teleportation. No. This is going to maybe harder chances to find the sewers, um, which is kind of unfortunate. But I didn't want to blind teleport somewhere on this level. Uh, stack of three. Amnesia. Oh, interesting. So we can use this to forget a spell and free up some spell slots. We'll probably do that. Um, uh, yeah, really abort. Blind reading scrolls is usually safe. Actually, I guess it's always safe. Um... You know, the one exception is make sure you don't, like, sit, do it on a stair. So if it's teleport or I guess it's a scroll of noise, you can just bop up the stairs and be safe. You tend to do it on a new level like this to take advantage if you roll um, mapping. Um, then, hey, it's great because then you've got this. Um, and yeah, there's a few things that could debuff you, but as long as you're not doing it in your enemies, it's okay. So we're going to shift X over here. Uh, oh, I thought it was there. Where is it? Oh, right here. So the entrance to the sewers. Now... The reason, oh, I'm gonna ignore you, I'm gonna go straight there. Oh man, that is scary. Let's get one more, there we go, the maximum number. I wish I could stab through you. Oh, that would be deep water or something. Excellent, okay. Glowing drain, all right. Um, let me go down right away. Because usually there's not someone in attack range immediately. So the sewers tend to have, like, I think a bunch of potions and things like that. Um, it could be dangerous, but we can always retreat out. Okay, melee you a little bit. We have no weapon skill or anything, so... Um, our, me our melee attack is not going to be terribly speedy. So the way in this game melee works, your weapon has a base delay. As you skill up, you can reach minimum delay, which is often a priority because um, then you often get multiple attacks in between enemy attacks, which is kind of nice. Um, your weapon skill also increases your, I think, your accuracy and maybe your damage with the weapon. Um, and so does fighting, but it's mostly about bringing the min delay down is, is your top priority. A lot of people will just reach min delay and then maybe stop leveling it up just because there's other places they want to spend XP. Like, it doesn't hurt to keep leveling up um, your weapon skill. In fact, it does make you a little bit better. But usually putting skills points somewhere else is even better than that. Okay, letting them get the kill. Yeah, polearm would be so good because we'd be able to attack through and still get in some, some beats. Uh, oh, I guess there'd be, the plant was going to be in the way, so I couldn't zap there. Okay, rest. Zap, zap, zap. Gotta watch out for the adders. Like, poison's pretty annoying. Let's go ahead and let the imps fight. Although they're going to, they like to teleport away. Potion. Oh. Oh. It's like, should I shout? Okay, he's seen me now, so he'll come to me. Boom, level five spell casting. We are hungry, but there's some corpses over here. Um, there's a button, what is it? Oh yeah, dot. So control F, oops. 
control F dot. This shows you everything on the level that you haven't picked up. Yeah, we don't need the darts. How do we know there's a cursed dagger? I guess someone was wielding it? Okay. So yeah, that's good. We've cleared this. We got a bunch of potions out of it. So we can leave this. It's a one-way trip. You can't go back in after. Kill this sewer rat. So that was quite nice. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, I still have scrolls of identify. So let's read that, I identify the potion. So, um, randomly drinking potions is bad. Randomly reading scrolls is okay. Potions, not so much. Because there's some pretty bad ones that you don't wanna quaff, that can have like, well, permanent changes to your character. Stupid adders, okay. More scrolls. We'll do some more reading of the scrolls at some point. Oh, dagger down there. Oh, my spell backfired, okay. Rest. Gloves. Can I not wear gloves? Wait, seriously? Uh, we don't have removed Cursed Known yet. Okay, I'm not gonna wear the, that yet. We can't wear gloves as a as an ogre? Sorry, I'm just checking the wiki here. Um, cannot wear any armor apart from robes, cloaks, hats, animal skins, troll leather armor, or dragon armor. Wow, okay, and hats, not helmets. Okay, well, I mean, I guess that'll have to do. Uh, I was gonna say, if there's a priest here, that's not great. I don't know. Yeah, I think we're, we're being smitten here. Smited, um, which can target through things. Yeah, see, he's smiting me there. Um, as long, ow, shit. I'm just gonna set up a teleport. There's a lot of this level I don't know about yet, but I really am hoping to dodge the priest. You're starving. All right, let's eat a ration. Shit. Excuse me. Shit. Um, do I have? I'm high enough level. I could be. I could have memorized Mephetic Cloud now, and that would be exactly what I want to deal with this guy. Okay, everyone's involved. Um, let's re er, uh, memorize uh, both Conjure Flame. Yep. And Mephetic Cloud. Yep. And what's our zap chances on there? So Mephetic Cloud is an area of effect that um, confuses people. It's a confusion sort of poison. It doesn't do damage, but it's really effective at um, breaking up groups. It stops spellcasters from casting spells at you. So Conjuration, Poison, Air. So the power and failure rate of the spell is based on those three skill schools. So, I mean, we're, we're still working on sort of Conjuration in general, which is good, but what I'm also gonna do is I will turn on um, Air and Poison, because the first couple of levels of a skill are really cheap to get. So I'm gonna go and do it, literally a couple. I will do uh, a target of level two for both air and poison. I don't expect there's gonna be a lot of air and poison cast, kind of casting in the long run here, but it'll cost us very little XP to get a little bit of that and assist in getting um, Mephetic Cloud to be fairly castable. I'm also gonna change the uh, skill target and conjuration to something like six, because I think we're gonna still want a wee bit more of that. And man, we have so many skills going simultaneously. Maybe I'll turn off summonings for now. I kind of want to start getting uh, fighting up for more hit points. Let me, when when we get to the point where um, Mephetic Cloud is castable fairly reliably, I'll turn fighting on and leave it on probably for the rest of the game at that point. Yeah, see, we even have a very reliant blink and we may need that for escapes. Conjure Flame as well, although we're still researching Conjuration, so that's going to help. May actually even want to focus Conjuration or something, but we'll leave that be. Another ring over there. At a certain point, it's probably... How do we know that it's cursed again? How do we know how it's cursed, rather the question? Like, knowing it's cursed because it was wielded to someone's hand, or welded to someone's hand, that's one thing, but how do we know what the actual curse amount is? I guess that's a change in the game. I don't know. Oh, more teleport scrolls. Zap, 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 zap. Um, actually, when I had the one gap there, I should have put down some fire. I need, what, two mana to summon an imp, right? Yes. 
The question mark means he's uh, he's not necessarily targeting me. Okay, we're gonna work our way up to the stairs. Now he's gonna follow me up, but he is unarmed. So his base damage hmm, is five. Yeah, see, he'd have to hit us three times in a row to kill us. So I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure we can just finish him off. Okay, back to this level. Um, yeah, we've, we've memorized every single spell we have access to at this time. You actually have a weapon, so you're slightly more dangerous. Although you're not alone, we failed to summon an imp. Summon a couple more. Oh, and then you die. That's fine. Hello, Mr. Unarmed Orc. Zap, zap, zap. Yeah, magic dart <laughs> really doesn't do impressive damage. We're going to keep boosting int. And then, yeah, we keep getting the boost of strength, which may pay off later. We don't even know that it will. Uh, so we're now dungeon level four, and it's got a slightly different branch. Now, I'm going to wait one turn. Let that orc move towards me, and then I'm going to pull him up the stairs with me. Um, creatures, so non-summoned creatures as well as, um, as long as they're not unintelligent undead like skeletons, they will follow you up the stairs. Well, I mean, I don't know if they're always guaranteed to all do it, if there's a crowd, um, but they will often follow you up the stairs if they're adjacent to the stairs. What the shit, man? Oh, no. Come down the stairs right next to an ogre who immediately bops us. He's jealous because of our magic. So he hits her base of 17 plus his giant club damage. Let me see here. Um, giant club. What's the base damage on that? 20. So he could hit us up to, up to 37, which could kill us in a single shot. Um, I mean, we got AC and things like that, but not much of it. Okay, we have to take this extraordinarily seriously. Do we, um, we don't know blinking. Teleportation takes a few turns. We don't know fear either. This was a really unfortunate staircase drop. I could try to slow you and then run maybe. Maybe I'll just trigger the blink and hope that I can put a little space between us. Let me try. Um, let me try a blink. There's a chance of failure. So this can put us... That is not very helpful. There's a chance. Nope. There's a chance that um, he wouldn't have made the move. Uh, I think there's... Uh, it's something like a one-third chance that they will move slightly less or move slightly faster. I think I'm just going to do some more. I'm going to try another blink. Miscast. Okay, there we go. Are you serious? You double moved that square. Okay. Could you stop? Okay, let's try to mephetic cloud him. What's the um, F? Okay, we did cast it. He did get confused. Now he's still generally going to try to move towards us, but a lot of times he'll move in the wrong direction. Okay, holy crap, that was terrifying. I guess we have checked all the downstairs. I don't know. I mean, the ogre is going to move around. Oh, yeah, it was this one. These two are very close together. Um, an exclusion. Yeah, I think it's this one. But that one has all the orcs, right? Well, maybe I can just pull some orcs. There you go. Uh, although, I don't like that thing. One, two. We can have up to three of them. Zap. Zap. Okay. If I rest, okay, I'm not dangerously poisoned. The game will let you know. Oh, that we did get really low. If you're so, um, do I have any bodies to chop up? No. If you're so poisoned that you might just die if you wait. I don't know if it's like perfect, but. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, one of these is probably remove curse. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of blind put on these rings. See invis. All right, that's handy. Uh, we'll put on the wooden ring. 
Ring of Fire. So Ring of Fire improves the potency of our fire spells. It also gives us our fire, but a, a vulnerability to cold. So we get resistance to fire, but vulnerability to cold. Um, we do actually have a fire spell that we might use. So there's that. All right, I didn't have to read any of these scrolls. Haste Lignification, Might. I mean, we could, just, we could quaff Might and see if we can just beat the hell out of people, but we might, this is the other one where the ogre might be. We might just be able to keep um, confusing you or something. And then blink to put a little bit of distance between us. Plus we've got our summons. White imp died. Sit back. Yeah, not so much, huh? Hmm. I need something that's smite targetable. Um, I don't think I can put a cl yeah. Even a cloud would hit my imp here. Maybe I could side sidestep. It's not like I have a ton of mana. And he's just gonna blink away and he's not very good defensively. Hmm. We may have to go back to Orc Stair, which is over here. I suppose they could use haste for run around run away from the uh, the ogre and just hope to find a different staircase. Yeah, I, I know we're like this is kind of slow here, but I gotta take this unbelievably seriously. This is really, really tough. Okay, pull you up. I'm gonna smack you with a club. Um, what is this? The war axe? You know, I should just use the war axe, I think, instead of the club, first of all. I suspect. Let's see, war axe. Uh, zero, 011, club. It's more accurate, but you generally want to go for the highest possible damage. Um, I don't think we found any two-handers. Let me check again for shields. Our best sort of hand weapon we've got right now. I guess I'll go down, come back up. We're dragging a lot of things here. This might be a good case to blink. Excellent. And then put a fire there. Nice. Um, zap, 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 zap. Oh, miscast. Miscast magic dart? Twice? 3% chance. Wow, that's uh, unfortunate. But most of them are dead. We'll just wait here. Um, don't want to run up to someone you want to melee because you'll run up and then they'll attack you Hit period to wait a turn. They'll move up to you and then you'll get the first shot and you know miss a whole bunch come. Like all we have to do is hit once it'll be fine Okay, let's uh, do this again Drag the jackal up we actually did a shocking amount of damage to me Okay, so now it's just the priest. I'm still worried about his smiting bullshit. Okay, this is quite nice. Come up. I'll bring some friends. <laughs> These imps keep teleporting away, the red imps. But they are they're fairly tanky, other than the fact that they, they run away and therefore don't really defend you. A plus four wait, how is this? Why are you identified? But yeah, we'll switch to the plus four mace. Um three eight. So slightly less base damage. More accuracy, and then it's got the plus four, so yeah, um, that's okay. Now, weirdly enough, we do have a minus aptitude with maces and flails, which I find kind of annoying. So there's a wizard down there. The wizard is a lot less scary than the priest. I mean, he's not alone, admittedly. They are annoying if they go invisible, but nope, there we go. And he's gonna hit me from range, but I've got better range. Scorpion is extremely scary. Hang on, come up here, reset this. How are spells? Magic darts actually three doses of power, um, but again, it's power. It's damage is like one d three plus stuff, so it's still not going to be very much. Contra flames got some hunger, sixteen percent failure risk. How's our? Oh yeah, and the mythetic cloud is sixteen percent. I think. You know what? I'm going to turn on fight at this point. Drop down here. What I'm gonna do is summon three imps. Maybe I should have stayed on the stairs, but there we go. That's, oh, there's an ogre.
Go, go, imps. Hey! All right, okay. So we're finally safe to sort of explore around here. There we go, Rune Hand Death. So I guess if they wield it, you know what it is, and if they don't, then you don't. Um, I'll grab it, and I will wield it. We do have a Remove Curse. Chopping. So Chopping is the, the sort of Vorpal brand. There's a chance of doing, I think, 50% more damage, but its base damage is so low that's not very helpful. Um, if it instead been, I mean, I may be wrong about the math, but I'm pretty sure this is correct. If it had instead been of electrocution, that adds like just flat electrical damage, that would be good, or a venom, which would also be valuable. Uh, we have like a little mini vault here? What is this archway? Would that have led to somewhere if I'd gotten here sooner? Just take an opportunity. This area is safe now. I'm just going to peek down some of these stairs. Is there another down staircase? No, that's the only one I know about so far. Teleportation scroll. There's a staircase there. What is what is with this level? That's... Okay. That's going to be a null pack. Imps are doing okay. Wow. Was, uh, surprisingly effective. Go go summons. Phantom's super duper annoying. Um, I don't actually expect that it could kill me despite being in red, uh, but they're really difficult to kill. They're fairly hard to hit and then they blink a lot. So I'll just put an exclusion level. So you can hit X to like get a cursor here or shift X and it'll give you a cursor that you can actually roam around a lot more. And then you can put your cursor over something, hit E, to make an exclusion area. The default E is like, makes line of sight. You can also go, if you hit it a second time, it'll just be one tile. And if you hit a third time, it'll go away. So our auto explorer will ignore or will avoid going into line of sight with the E Phantom. Now, if I happen to make a bunch of noise, uh, which you can see here, it could wake up. Uh, luckily my spells are pretty silent and it'll mostly be if something shouts when I engage it. Mm, bacon strips. Orc Priest. See, this guy's going to shout because he's a big douche. Let me break line of sight immediately. If you want to keep coming sort of vaguely towards me, that's okay. Uh, I have no idea where he went. Okay. Well then, let's rest a sec. Yeah, the scorpion is pretty scary. Being poisoned, level seven. Oh, there's two Orc Priests. Do not like at all. This is a good one for uh, Mephetic Cloud. There we go, drop a Confuse on you. You're bringing friends. No, 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 stop. Uh, Shift Z A. Out over there. Keep people fairly confused. So they can't smite me. Yeah, the Phantom's awake. He's gonna do a lot of blinking. Uh short sort of venom. Hmm. Venom's really good. I kinda like the plus zero. Blinking aggressively towards me. And then you've got jackal friends. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna drink haste. Oh, it's still not enough to outrun the uh, the jackals? Although they probably can't hit me as I run with haste, unless they get a free action. There we go, a little bit of a gap. I'm just gonna try to run all the way to an upstair. Like that. Feel myself slowing down. That's fine. Let's just uh, go up the stairs for now. Whew. All right. All right, that's the close one. Uh, which might be okay. I'm gonna summon an imp there, just in case you did have buddies like that.
Rest, rest, rest. Eat, eat, eat. Explore, explore, explore. Um, the Phantom is no longer here, so it was Shift X. So I will remove this exclusion zone so we can actually auto explore this area. Wait, is there another Phantom? Did we not kill the Phantom? He's not red now, though. The game's like, yeah, you're a little stronger now. Um, most of these are going to be really annoying. It would be less concerning if he was on the floor alone. The fact that there's still dudes around does make this a little scarier. There you go, destroyed. Through a combination of spells and melee. These worms, given our general lack of strength, is still annoying. Okay, we've reached some of our targets. What's our cloud? I see 11%. Now, I don't know if more spell power on Mephitic Cloud makes it more likely to poison. It's possible. Um, I mean, we're still working on a little bit of poison magic. It's still Conjuration as well. I think this is fine. I'll leave on Spellcasting and Conjuration. The Conjuration will also help with Conjure Flame. Not that we've really put that to use. Speaking of, though, let's go and do the same thing. We're going to get a couple of levels of Fire Magic. Just because it's going to be cheap, it'll help with that. It's not really going to cost us anything in the long run. Whether or not we do more Fire Magic, well, it's more... I'm sorry, that is Shield? There's a Shield there. And the Sword of Venom. I don't... I don't... That eh, maybe. Uh, we're going to put on the Shield. Now, the shield, since we're large, we need nine skills to remove the penalty. I'm going to hit S to set a target for it. So we're now researching shields. Um, we do have the minus one, which is unfortunate. I'm actually going to focus shields because right now, wearing this, there is a chance that we'll have like spell failure and things increased. That's it, Zed. Oh, but quite a bit. If I take off the shield, because it's in my inventory, I think I can still research or study shields, yes. Okay, so we're not going to wield or wear the shield. We're going to keep training shields, though. And then when the skill um, is a little bit better, we'll put it back on, uh, which will eliminate our spell casting penalty and whatnot. We're going to go ahead and eat. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a cut in here. <sighs> Poison resistance. You know what? Hold on. I didn't realize we had that. Um, I'm going to put that on instead of the, the ring of fire which Ring of Fire isn't that helpful for us right now. And if we get randomly hit by something cold, we could take a shocking amount of damage. I mean, the Ring of Invis Invisibility is something you can put on and off as needed, but I think I feel a little safer with this particular thing. In fact, I'm even gonna drop the Ring of Fire right now. Um, well, no, hold on, I'll carry it because if we happen to run into something that's gonna do fire damage, then I could slip it on then, and that'll be okay. All right, folks, we're gonna wrap it up here. Thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna see you guys next time.